What's up everybody? My name is Russ. I'm with rwgresearch.com. I'm going to show you the date. September 13th. 11.33 a.m. Oh, I'm sorry. September 19th. 11.33 a.m. Alright. Today is the day. I officially have the noble gases, which I have shaken the canister for a little while. Possibly not long enough. I have the... Uh, apparatus here that we're going to be testing. Uh, for those of you who have no idea, this is update number eight and I am going to be um, trying to replicate what Bob Rohner has shown on the internet which is using noble gases to create a plasma to do work. Um, if you want to look into this more please go to rwgresearch.com and cl click on noble uh, gas engine and basically it's a noble gas engine um, a guy by the name of Pap is the original um, inventor. And I'm here to see if it works. So, uh, back to the work. This is what I have. I'm going to give you a close-up of the circuit. Um, I need to actually pull that up for you. It is posted over at the forums if you would like to see the circuit that I'm working with right now. This is going to be hard to see and I apologize. It looks something like that. I know. Terrible quality. It's over at the forums. Go check it out. Alright, so basically what I have here is a canister of gases. It has uh, xenon, neon, krypton, argon, and helium. There's the percentages. Xeon. I did say that right, didn't I? And here's the setup. Um, it's basically exactly what Bob Rohner has shown on the internet, like I said. Um, my last couple of videos is I did have to drill these out so that these connectors fit in here. This is uh, Teflon tubing and I did go ahead and use the brass fittings but I'm going to find some uh, some plastic ones instead of the o-rings I had. Um, the cylinder that I have here is a three and a quarter inch cylinder and I have machined a different style head on it to match what Pap describes in his patents. Um, it's a six inch long, three and a quarter inch diameter air cylinder. That is it. Uh, this base is just steel. This head is steel, and the rest of it is aluminum, and the shaft is steel. The circuit that I just showed you consists of a high voltage sparking gap system. That's this. I've got that going into this transformer I've made, and that spark gap is going to allow a discharge across these capacitors. All right, and that is going to allow energy to flow between here high voltage and then allow a low voltage high current to drop across that ionized pathway to create a starting point for the plasma. Um, the rest of my circuit is over here. This is just a Variac. Um, this is a tooling transformer from 120 volts up to, right now I have it actually wired as 220, 230, or 240 and that I have a relay here which basically allows me to turn on and off the charging I do have a bridge rectifier just some generic diodes I took out of something and I'm um, rectifying that running that over here into these two capacitors these two capacitors are 3300 microfarad 350 volts I will only be charging them up to approximately 200 volts um, I'm gonna try 135 uh, which will get me close to the amount of joules. Yes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right now. And basically just dump that across here and see what happens. Um, I do not have these buckets connected and there is no radioactive material in them. They are just in there for this test and they're just cl closing the holes, but I will actually be uh, um, using those as regenerative energy. Now I do not have a coil and I'm just trying to prove that the system works. I do have wire ordered and we'll see where that takes us. Um, I have here a septa um, and a needle and syringe that I will be using to fill this chamber out of this cylinder. Okay. Um, is there anything else? I have a switch here. This switch controls the relay, which allows me to charge or not charge. This disconnects the capacitors from my transformer and also allows me to energize the 120 volt for that neon sign transformer which makes the rest of my circuit actually function. So I can do auto charge by leaving this on 
And every time I hit it, I can just pop, 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 pop. Or I can turn it off, hit it once, and then it should be discharged to eh, approximately 50 volts. It doesn't go all the way down. Um, I do have a safety device that I rigged up here. This is a uh, quarter inch on one side, quarter inch on, on the other side. Um, that is um, uh, polycarbonate. So it's really just to stop any shrapnels from hitting me directly. I don't uh, have any reason that it should explode, but safety first. I have my glasses. I do have a World War II Army helmet that I could wear. And those of you who have been watching me a while will actually probably like me to do that. I might, just for fun. Um, okay, so really quickly, I am just going to set the camera down. We're going to do a couple tests on the circuit because I have not actually ever fired inside the test chamber here. I know it's a little bit out of your view, but you'll see fire and flames, I'm sure. So let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, plug it in. I got my meter here. I'm going to turn my meter on. Nope. I'm not going to turn my meter on because I left it on. It's all right. We'll switch it out. Now I'll have my meter on. And I'm going to set this to 1,000 volts DC. And I'm going to plug in my circuit. Turn down my Variac. Turn on my charging. I want to bring it up to 100 volts to start with. Which is right there. Turn off my charging and fire. Okay. Like a charm. So let's go ahead and bring it up voltage. Charging on. Let's go up to just, let's just go 200 right away. That's fine. Right there's 200 volts and fire. So I would say that's plenty of energy. If you'd like to see rapid fire real quick, here it is. So I can hook that up to a timing circuit and fire away. All right, that smells nice. Probably like 480 tons. Okay, so chamber works really well. I am going to just assemble this. Uh, I'm just going to do everything right in front of your eyes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the camera right here. I'm trying to get me included. In case something goes terribly wrong, you guys can see me pee my pants. All right, you can see me. I did uh, take another vacuum pump compressor out of a different air conditioner and uh, I actually like it a lot better. Works a lot faster. So I'm just going to, I moved this seal so I got to make sure it sits in there nice and square and flat and round and whatever. Again. Looks okay. Go ahead and set my cylinder on top. Install my bolts. But one thing I do have to do, I need to get better bolts. These are just standard all thread and they're not uh, hardened. I will need to get some hardened stuff so that if the pressure is high enough it uh, doesn't stretch my bolts. If it stretches my bolts I'm going to lose my gas and I won't be able to do long runs. I think I can do long runs with this setup only if I allow time in between each fire. So I can fire this thing a long time but if I do it rapidly like I just showed you what happens is this coil, since it's an inductor, it gets hot because I'm dumping the full load of those capacitors across across it. Alright. Need to leave these a little bit longer next time. I do plan on adding a spring return 
after the initial couple of tests here. While I'm doing this, I do want to say something. I would like to make sure everyone is on the same page, and I want to kind of tell you who I am, why I'm here, what I'm doing. I am no more than a reporter researcher. I am showing the world what is real, what is not, and instead of just reporting on it, I'm actually doing the work. Now, I do have to say that uh, I cannot do this work without the help of individuals such as uh, Pete, Echoes Pete, which has actually funded this entire project. Um, I have to, uh, to thank my uh, Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, because without Him, this probably wouldn't have got this far. Those of you who are not religious, no, no offense, doesn't matter. Just got to tell you how it is. So, um, all right, now what I'm going to do is look up this vacuum pump. You just saw me install that cylinder. Get this vacuum pump. This is actually a compressor, but uh, it pulls a vacuum as well. Open all my gauges. Turn it on. I'll not be able to see the vacuum. This does not go all the way down to three uh, to thirty inches. It goes really, really close, but not quite. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to make sure it's holding for a second since I moved that seal around a little bit. Oh yeah, it's good. I'm going to turn it back on. Now my pump vacuum doesn't quite work as fast as what Bob does, so I'm going to give it just a minute to really get up to the max potential here. I just have one syringe and one needle. I'm just going to transfer it one at a time. All right. Unplug this. Get it out of the way. Okay. Just going to take my time and make sure I get everything correct here. Um, that all looks just fine. Looks like we're holding a vacuum, so let's go ahead and install these gases. Now, uh, one thing I can tell you about these gases, when I turn this on, I can bring it up to about 8,000 psi, it's at like 2200. I can bring it up to about a little past, I'm at uh, 8, 9, 10, 10,000, uh, not quite, about 9,000 psi. And just the amount of gas that's inside this that I turned that on, I turned it back off now, just the gas that's inside here will fill up my cylinder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And we'll, uh, we'll fill it up. Now, I'm going to blow that first bit out. Get everything mixed up good inside my thing, because I uh, already filled it up once but didn't fire it, just test it out. So there's 60 cc's, and yes, the syringe does pull back in. I do have a syringe that is lubricated. My chamber holds around 265 cc's at one atmosphere. So that's two. This will be three. Are you guys excited? I am very exhausted, I will be honest. Because I've been trying to get prepared for this, and I am ready. 
I'm a little nervous. That was three. about just under zero there. Okay. I'll pull a little bit of that out. Get just above one. Turn that off. Turn my gauge off. Disconnect my gauge, blow out these gases. This stuff's kind of smells, I will be honest. Um, Alright. I'm ready to go, guys. Here we go. A lot of work went into this. A lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of your guys' help. I need support, and I really appreciate your guys' support. I'm good to go. I got nothing else to say here. Uh, I'm going to turn it on, charge it up, 200 volts. I just want to say thank you guys. If anything goes wrong, appreciate everything you did. If it goes right, let's go for it. Making sure everything's okay. Let's fire. Three, two, one. I got a little raise. Charge it again, fire it again. Alright, let's uh, crank this up. I'm going to go higher voltage. Now I got to push this down because I'm not all the way up. Alright, so. Alright, I am going to add a little bit more gas to make sure I am at the correct level. Because I might be slightly under. So I'm going to add, let's see, my 50. Oh yeah, it started to suck in a little. Again, I don't have the coil or anything else, so. Charging. Firing. Charging. Firing. Alright. So, it does, indeed, work. Oh, hold on, didn't charge it. Alright, firing. I gotta push this down, I have no spring return. Alright. Very interesting. I'm gonna zoom in on this thing so you can see it. It is working, but I definitely think we'll need to fine-tune it a little. There's no doubt about that. I'll need to get a mirror for you, too. Alright. Charged. Well. Interesting. It is doing it, but it is not powerful like I was expecting. But it is firing. Some of that might have to do with the fact that I'm not using any pre-ionization, not using any radioactive material. 
Okay, so there you go. Um, it is moving, it is doing its thing. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to get a bunch of different capacitors and see if we can get more energy across there to get it more plasmatized because my thought on it was that if I'm not using radioactive material to pre-energize the system to get things going, then it will not have quite the amount of effect. You're going to have to put more energy into it to get it to do it because you're not pre-ionizing. So I've got more capacitors. I will hook them all up and we'll give it a little more joules. All right. Okay. Can't see them, but I'll show them to you. I added the bank of 1,000 farad each. We're going to be up to 8,000 farad. I can only charge to 250 volts. That's what they're rated at. So I'm doing slow charging instead of rapid charging because if I don't, it's going to kill my system. It's going to blow some fuses. All right. So I'm going to slowly charge this. instead of rapidly charging it. Let's just go back to our 200 volts. I'll push this down. Three, two, one. Same effects. There we go, more voltage. It's my trip of breaker. Firing in three, two, one. Ah, oh, now I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to see the table shaking a little more. It's a little bit more violent. See that? So, RF or radioactive materials are going to be my next choice of action here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fire this one more time. I've got more capacitors. We'll add some more on there. So I'm getting more travel now than I was. So let's let's continue on. Alright guys, I've added just another bank of capacitors that I have. 150 or 1,500 microfarads a piece. So 6,000 more microfarads. And once again, i got to charge this slowly. Let's just go ahead and go full potential here. I can only go up to 2... Oh, see, those are 200 working volts. No, those are 250. I can still go to 250. All right, I'm at 250. 3, 2, 1. There we go. So does it work? I'd say yeah. Let's see if I blow a fuse here. That right, worked. All right, so it does. It is actually more powerful. Every time I fire it, it brings back about 50 volts. I really need some spring return on here. But... Oh, I didn't charge it. All right, so if you'd like to see what just the high voltage looks like. Okay. That's just the high voltage. So if I charge the caps, fire them. That's what it looks like. Now, I do have this mounted on a rubber block, so it's not near as violent as Bob's. Let's add some more capacitors. Okay guys, so what I've done is connected my capacitors a little different, connected my transformer a little different. And I'm going to be charging as high as a voltage as I can get it. And my capacitance went down but my voltage went up. Should be able to get to 600 volts but do not know if this transformer will give it to me. Oh, it will. All right, there's 600 volts. So firing in three, two, one.
I'm gonna get some more capacitors. Oh, I forgot these. Wait a minute. Okay, guys, boys and girls, here's the deal. We got every piece of capacitor we got laying around that'll work with this system. One thing I want you to remember: this wire is actually pretty small. I am not getting the full amount of current through this inductor, which is what it is, or this wire. Remember that. I need more energy because I'm not using any other form of ionization energy, such as the thorium, rubidium, um, strontium, all that stuff. Or I'm not using RF, so don't forget. Part of the reason why I'm putting so much energy into this. Alright, 600 volts. Where are we at? Right there. Ready? Yep. Every time I add more energy, it goes up. Further and further and further. Let's see if it'll handle this current. Ready? Some sparks go flying. Now I'm getting some movement. So, try it again. So I would say this has potential. We need more ionization energy. That's my conclusion. Hmm. I like how everything shakes like crazy over here. It's hard to see how fast that piston moves, but it definitely moves. It's going pretty far compared to what it was. One more time. Alright. Now, that inductor is really really hot. So that tells me that uh, I need to rewrap my coil and get it to work with a little bit more uh, a little bit less turns. I mean it's hot. I get my uh, look at this. Hundred and sixty degrees. This side's cold. It's a primary. The secondary is pretty hot. I'm curious. The chamber is actually still very cold. It's not warm at all. Alrighty. Let's do a few more tests. All right, I've moved my uh, electrodes together a little bit more. Let's see if we get any more out of that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that is hot. So, I need to get more power into this thing. Real quickly, I'm going to uh, take this thing apart. And I'd like to show you how big of a bang's coming out of the thing, because it's a lot. Alright guys, you want a front row seat? This is as close as I'm going to get you. I'm going to charge this all the way up to maximum potential and fire it. 
you can see the amount of energy that I was using. Maybe. Done. Hold on, I gotta undo this resistor. Alright. Now the discharging resistor is connected still. So you want to see what 600 volt looks like at the amount of capacitance that I have. Firing in 3, 2, 1. So, you want to do it again? If you're wondering how loud that is, I'll set you way over here just so you can hear everything echo. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> it's a lot of power. It's a lot of power. One more time. There's my voltage, by the way. Three, two, one. Wowzers. Burn a hole in my camera. Alright, well, this has been an exciting adventure. Let's uh, hook this resistor up. Discharge those caps. See if there's a temperature rise in these electrodes. Huh. Hardly warm at all, but with the inert gases, it probably won't be warm hardly at all. Alright, just for fun, really quickly, I'm going to do a rapid fire with this much power. And then it'll probably trip my breaker. Three, two, one. Three times, trip my breaker. Good times, good times. Uh, I gotta do it one more time now. I guess I gotta pull you in, don't I? That's a lot of fun. All right. I'm out for the day. I've been up for way too many hours. Peace and love to you all. Have a good day. Wow, that got dark. See you guys. Ah, you thought it was over, didn't you? Well, this thing quit working after a little bit of time. This transformer. And you can see by the looks of it, if it'll focus. I wrapped it so tight that the wire was pinched off and was shorting against the inside of here. So I'm going to be remaking this transformer, obviously. But, uh, oh yeah, look at that. So I'll be remaking this transformer. <laughs> it's like stuck to it. In case you were wondering what it looks like. That's how much wire I had on that one. This is a different transformer than I was using before. I was using something a little different. That is hot. Alright, so what's my conclusion? More ionization energy is needed. I do think uh, from these tests, I mean, the thing is actually moving. Um, you can see the table jump a little bit, which means something is happening forceful-wise. But uh, we don't have quite the ionization energy that we need. That is my opinion. I do not know. And uh, we'll try the RF next. Add a little bit of that in there and see what we get. And possibly some bigger wire on the transformer to uh, allow more power to actually go through this thing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me a comment. And uh, don't go dogging on people because it don't work. This is my first try. Alright, enjoy. Have a good day. This is Russ with rwgresearch.com. See you guys.